I'm doing this video both as a how-to for the viewers and a reminder to myself. I decided that this priceless extended time in lockdown is a great way for skill building rather than merely learning about things. Let me be clear what I mean by that. While there's a whole lot of knowledge in the world and not a lot of time to learn all of it, one way you can make your learning more effective, no matter how old you are or what you do, is to develop the very tools that help you learn, to develop your skills. On that note, for the last few weeks, I've been practicing a lot of math. I think up to a point you reach a plateau in your problem solving abilities. I can't stand for its effectiveness, but I thought that knowing what your brain does while solving problems and trying to consciously improve it would be a great way to overcome this plateau. So here we are, unraveling some tips that borrow from the psychology of problem solving to make you better problem solvers. That said, in the description I've attached a small PDF that you can print out and attach to the front of your notebook to ensure that you're working at the best of your ability every time you do math or any other problem solving related subject. A lot of what I'm saying is borrowed from a book called The Art and Craft of Problem Solving by Paul Zayats. I highly, highly recommend reading it if you're invested in becoming better problem solvers. Without further ado, here's a few things to try out and be mindful of while solving any kind of problem. The mountaineering analogy. You're standing at the base of a mountain, hoping to climb to the summit. At first, you might want to go straight for the peak, but maybe you'll realize that going straight to the peak requires skills and techniques that you are yet to develop. So, you scale a few smaller peaks first to get a good gauge of what the mountain requires and to develop your skills. Similarly, solving smaller problems than the one at hand often help strengthen intuition. If you see a problem that requires you to find an answer for all real numbers, perhaps you can try doing it for 0 or 1 first and see if you can generalize that solution to the requirement. Number 2. Changing representation Often problems are much better visualized than not. Our working memory can only handle so much information when it's written out. But when the words are visualized, it's usually much easier to solve the problems. Paul Zayats has a great chapter in his book that visualizes word problems to make them almost trivial. Another way you can change representation is to changing the notation in which you're representing a question. Creativity. Try out whack ideas, they might just work. Or perhaps they may just seem whack to you because you're new to them, but you're actually on the right track. Einstein once said that pure math in its way is the poetry of logical ideas. But what I want you to take away from that in this context is that math is a creative field more than any other and you should apply that creativity in solving problems. In a lot of school math, we're taught types of questions. While this is not inherently wrong, we often start looking at the data and the problems we come across as a means to an end rather than what it is, data. Data, do you even know what a joke is? Of course I do. It is a witticism, a gag, a bon mot, a fluctuation Stop. of... This is called functional fixedness where we assume that the meaning of t equals 4 seconds is that we have to apply a certain formula to get the answer. Apply what you know in different ways and try to actively remove your existing mental sets when you're trying to solve problems. Number 5. Mental toughness and grit. Okay, this is a big one. I think most mathematicians would agree that the fact that school math is under time test conditions is probably one of the biggest failures of math and education. It took me long to understand this, but math doesn't work like that. Math takes time to unravel. Sometimes people work on problems for days, months, years, decades, centuries. I'm only asking you to change 20 minutes to 20 hours. Borrowing from the point about creativity, if your first whack idea doesn't work, try another. Keep trying other whack ideas until you run out of ideas. So that when you ask someone for help, you've exhausted your imagination and their solution more likely than not will arise from one of your own ideas. That said, I'm not really the authority on how to be good at math, but these are just techniques that I've seen are effective and I've tried to apply when I solve problems. The good thing is, all of these generalize to any type of problem solving ever. As a reminder of the contents of this video, you can download and print the aforementioned PDF from the description. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and turn the notification bell on for more stuff we make. Like, comment and share with other nerdy friends that would benefit from this video.